Hey YouTube, uh, this is my carry gun, the Glock 26. Let me safety check this first. So, uh, this gun uh, deserves a video recognition being a US made Glock. Because I have not seen US Glock videos in YouTube except for one. A gun review of a US Glock 27 that is in 40 caliber. And of course, uh, Glock 26 is in 9x19 but uh, this is not about this gun as you can see on the title here I am here to talk about concealed carry and I believe that every law abiding citizen should concealed carry so I am all for every household to own a weapon or firearms legally of course to protect themselves their family and loved ones from criminals if you tell me if we die we die no matter what it's God's will then uh, that's right uh, death is inevitable we cannot prevent it from happening only God can but I also believe that criminals have no right to take lives and I'm sure that they are not God's instrument for your death your family or your loved ones death criminals are manifested by the devil so we have to prepare for that aside from uh, the spiritual aspect of our preparation it's like we cannot prevent disaster from happening but we have to prepare for it I only decided to start concealed carrying this year and, and for me carrying a concealed handgun is like carrying my uh, thin can survival kit although I'm carrying it I am praying that I don't get to use it because if that happened that means I'm in a life-threatening situation or my family or my loved ones or my friends are but by by carrying it I am taking steps to to minimize risk uh, because you never know when something bad is going to happen and, and most of the time you cannot control it or, or at least expect it firearms are nothing new to me when I was growing up and because my dad was an officer in the armed forces of the Philippines and, and yes I live in the southern part of the Philippines and my dad is my true hero by the way he, he serves this country for almost four decades so he used to conceal carry all the time if he's on a civilian clothing and he carry 1911 Colt uh, caliber 45 in condition one ever since I can remember uh, if you don't know about carry condition on the 1911 check out some videos on that so my dad never had any accidental firing uh, ever since and he must really know what he's doing with his 1911 and, and that is also one thing you should consider when concealed carrying is uh, understanding your gun well and be able to handle it well for new concealed carry guys like me, uh, when you choose a gun for concealed carry, you have to consider the caliber. That includes the size and the weight, also the firepower or uh, magazine capacity, and most of all, the reliability of the gun. Uh, that includes precision as well. And I have to include for first-time gun owners also, men or or women do not choose a pistol uh, that is a bit or too complicated and my example to that are those with external safety single action uh, hammered uh, pistols like the 1911s and those uh, with its external safety single action double action with uh, the hammer hammered pistols like uh, the Berettas and HNKs my advice or my opinion are those internal safety double action uh, strike fired pistols like the Glocks Smith & Wesson's MMPs Springfield XT's NDMs and, and the list goes on because I just find those uh, strike fired pistols the safest now that I, I owned one but again uh, that's just my opinion I'll still leave it up to you uh, to choose on the kind of pistol you feel that is right for you of course, in order for you to to legally carry a gun, you need a CCW permit. Like I said, I live in the Philippines and here we call it PTC or a permit to carry. Now, when you own a gun, 
you should be able to handle it properly or practice it all the time especially when you're carrying it you cannot just buy a handgun and expect it to be reliable and accurate right away or all the time when you need it when you only get to fire it uh, every six months or, or twice in a year or once a year it's your obligation to practice uh, not just for yourself but your for, but for your family as well and, and the people around you because as they say when the shit hits the fan uh, you don't get any accidental firing or, or uh, shot any bystander in the process and also you should practice the way you carry it uh, if you carry it uh, uh, with a round in the chamber then practice it with a round in the chamber if you carry it uh, without a round in the chamber then practice rocking the slide from uh, drawing it from concealed without a round in the chamber if you carry it on your waist you practice drawing it from your waist uh, if you carry it with a pouch or a swing bag you practice drawing it from your bag you don't expect that you'll be able to draw it from your bag under a stress situation when you're practicing drawing it from your holster all the time I don't care how many practical shooting you have won or attended in my book that is not practical so again practice all the time and practice it the way you carry it uh, every weekend twice a month once a month or every two months or once every three months at, at most at least that's my opinion I know ammo so are expensive here in our country and also when you concealed carry you have to prepare to protect not just yourself but your not just your family but but others as well that is our role as an armed civilian See, for example in a situation when you're with your family having a nice walk somewhere and all of a sudden a person starts shooting people and police are not around to respond right away you have to step up and do something to stop that person from from killing more people or, or your family but I know it all depends on the situation if you're not in a position to take that guy down then secure your family and get out of the place but if you're in a position to take him down then take him down step up like I said it is a role as an armed civilian uh, just make sure you you reholster your gun so the police won't think that you're the bad guy when they arrive and also one thing when you conceal carry avoid showing off that's why it's called concealed carry because because it's supposed to be hidden to avoid from being seen it doesn't mean that you have an expensive gun you have to show it off or it doesn't mean that you have a gun you have to show it off it makes you vulnerable even the simple things like putting a Glock sticker on your car makes you vulnerable here in our country you see private vehicles all the time with uh, stickers on their car saying a baby on board with a baby armalite or an M4 on top of it I mean what's that it's that supposed to scare people that uh, that you have a firearm with you inside your car for me it's showing off and it's a dumb move again it that makes you more vulnerable stay low profile as much as possible so when is the time that we're going to draw our gun? We are going to draw our gun when our lives are in danger, when our family's lives are in danger, or even other people's lives are in danger. If you're in a confrontation, you don't have to draw your gun and shoot that guy right away or draw your gun to scare him off. You're still going to jail for that. You have to remember it all the time that when you carry a gun, the more you have to be patient and, av and avoid confrontation. And if you cannot avoid a confrontation, don't settle on drawing your gun right away. You have to, if you have to use your hand to to protect yourself, to defend yourself, if possible, uh, learn some martial arts, or pull out a non-lethal weapon or something to defend yourself. Unless your attacker pulls a knife or a gun, I guess that's a time. Uh, that you're going to pull your gun our criminal law in the Philippines provide for instances where a person may defend himself and not be prosecuted for what would normally be a criminal action now who are those persons does not uh, incur any criminal liability under section 1 article 11 of the revised penal code of the Philippines 
anyone who acts in defense of his personal rights, provided that the following circumstances concur or agree. Uh, the first is unlawful aggression. Uh, it must be present. The second is reasonable necessity of means employed to prevent or repel it. And the third is lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the person defending himself. But of course, all this will, will, will end up in court. So you must have credible, clear, and convincing uh, evidence to prove that in front of a judge. So carrying a gun or concealed carry is not about being a tough guy. It's about being a law-abiding citizen. It's about being responsible. And it's about being prepared. So that's my philosophy about concealed carry and why I concealed carry. So thanks for watching and I guess I'll talk to you again soon. Stay safe.